got that world 1500 meters record back he's very very strong indeed at the moment as rob harrison number 15 i think you might see him in front on these first two laps we're a bit unsteady eddie stevens the belgian was uh, rocking about and in fact harrison is having a job to get through to the front and steve cram and Ovet right at the back but they've settled down three from back it's obet third from back and Cram following him and the head waiter in this game was Weigua, has gone through and they're left at the tail end brendan foster they're just looking for each other well they're miles away from the pace and obet was waiting to let Cram through because he's obviously decided he's going to track steve Cram. and as soon as steve Cram went ahead of him obet followed so now the race is on and it's it's Cram ahead of obet and obet tracking him he's got him in his sight He's obviously decided he's going to follow him every inch of the way. And the pacemakers are miles ahead. They're absolutely wasting their time out there because I would think the race is going on back, back in the pack. But if, if the pacemakers are good enough, they could continue. I mean, it's one of those races where everything seems to have gone wrong pacemaking-wise, as we've seen again. Well, the time uh, for the first lap, just over 55 seconds for the leaders, I would think the chasing group are 57 seconds plus. So that's outside a world record schedule. But... The man in second place is dangerous. I have no illusions about that. That is Pierre Delis, uh, the Swiss record holder, who's done 333 recently, and they can't afford to let him get too far. Actually, Weguar in third place was timed at just inside 59 seconds. Harrison leads. Delis in second place. There's Weguar being overtaken by number three, Jack Buckner. Uh, Steve Cram at Weguar's shoulder. And this is a tactical battle now between Cram and Obet, but they mustn't forget that Swiss. Harrison's pacemaking is uh, right on target, but they've not gone with the pace at all. Still Harrison leading. Delise in second place. In third place, Buckner. Fourth is Weber. In fifth place, Cram. Sixth is Obet. And seventh place, Kurek of Poland. And this is a real battle between the two of them. There'll be no quarter given at all. But well, they're closing now on, on the leading group, and obviously the pacemaker, Rob Harrison, who's done a good job, he's tiring now. I noticed Cram glance over his shoulder, and then they're now 700 metres from the finish, and the next 300 metres, it'll be they're going into the last lap, and then it will be all to do. In fact, uh, the pace there, way outside World Rector's right schedule, the third man through there was through in 158+. plus. That's Buckner leading, Cram in second place, and Ovet stalking Cram all the time. Delis in fourth place. And these four slightly clear of Weigua and Kura Kapola, followed by Mike Boyd of Kenya. Buchter now really pressing hard in front. And Cram has been bold enough to take over on from the front. These are the moments when self-doubt creeps in. He's really got to attack now because he's there to be shot at. Obet sitting and waiting and no one does it better. 2.58 at the bell, the time unimportant. The battle for supremacy is now really on. And the bold, front-running Cram has made the break, but hasn't broken Ovet. Ovet in the perfect position. Cram with an elegant stride, and then the control power of Steve Ovet in second place. Menacing Cram all the time, and Cram trying to run the finish out of the world 1500 meter record over. Ovet showing signs of pain, but Cram hasn't got away. What has Ovet got left? Cram tries to kick again. The gap opens. It's two yards. Can Ovet close it? Here he comes on the near side in the perfect position to attack. Cram is still holding that yard. And it's Cram going away again. But Ovet closes once more. But Steve Cram, the champion of the world, proves himself the champion of the world to beat Steve Ovet with Wilson Wade by third. Delisi fourth place. Buckner five. What a race that was. 352.56. But no one will remember this race for the time. They'll remember it for an epic battle on the last lap. And the boy who's champion of the world, champion of Europe, champion of the Commonwealth, totally unafraid. He ran the race from the front with the boldest possible manner, and he beat Stone of it fairly and squarely. Brendan Foster. Well, what a confrontation. To my mind, there were two heroes in that race.